Hey everybody, our topic today is order fractions on a number line using the benchmark of one half. Here's our number line, it's just a simple number line starting from the left side from zero to one with one half in between. And we have four fractions of differing values that we need to place in order on the number line. Write the fractions in order from least to greatest on the number line. Least to greatest means that we're going to go from left to right, least to greatest. Our strategies today are going to be to compare each fraction to one half. We call that a benchmark fraction, and we might use cross multiplication if we're not sure that we're being helped by the half. Okay, six twelfths. Six twelfths is a fraction that is equivalent or equal to one half, so that would be placed right here. Four sixths. I know that 3 6 would be equivalent to 1 half, so 4 6 would be greater. Put that approximately here. 1 third would be a fraction that is less than 1 half, meaning that it's going to go over on this side here. I'm going to place 1 third here, and then 2 fifths is also less than one half. So it's going to go on this side, but I need to decide if it's going to go in between the one third and six twelfths or over here. I can use my cross multiplication strategy for that. I'm gonna rewrite that fraction, two fifths, and compare it to one third. Five times one is five, three times two, is six. When I compare six and five, I can see that six is greater. That means that the two fifths is greater than the one third. So we're going to place the two fifths. So this is what we mean when we are ordering fractions on a number line, and we're using the primary strategy of the benchmark of one half. When we compare and order fractions, compare just means to put side by side. For example, one half and two thirds, we put side by side. And comparing means that we're just doing two fractions. There are three outcomes, greater than, less than, or equal to. So for example, one half is less than two thirds. And I could use a cross multiplication strategy. Two times two is four and three times one is three. And when I compare, I can see that four is greater than three, so therefore two thirds is greater. When we order fractions, we're also putting them side by side, but there are more than just two fractions. For example, here we have one, two, three fractions, and many times there can be four and even five fractions. Usually we will order those from least to greatest, sometimes greatest to least, and most of the time from left to right, but sometimes that will differ depending on the directions. Our strategy today is benchmark fractions. Benchmark fractions are fractions that are really easy to compare other fractions to. Our benchmark fraction is one half, and that's really the fraction that we want to relate to. Most people can really easily relate to half whether it's half of a pizza or half of a pie. And it's important that you know fractions that are equivalent to one half. There are many fractions that are equivalent, but for this lesson, which is mostly targeted at fourth grade, we go up to fractions with denominators of 12. So for example, two fourths is equivalent to one half. Three sixths is equivalent to one half. 4 eighths, 5 tenths, and 6 twelfths are all equivalent to 1 half. So in other words, for example, if I wanted to place 5 tenths, I know that 5 tenths is equal to 1 half, so if I had to write it, I would write it right here because it is equal. That would hold true for all of these equivalent fractions to 1 half.
we can model fractions that are equivalent, just to prove that, equivalent to one half. Here's our half, and you can see that it aligns pretty much to our number line, maybe not perfectly in this example, but I think you get the idea. Here we have fourths, this would be one fourth and two fourths, and you'll notice again that that's equivalent to one half. Six, one, two, three, six are equivalent to half. Four eighths, five tenths, and here we have one, two, three, four, five, six twelfths. All of those are equivalent to one half. When we compare fractions to one half, remember that there are three outcomes. Less than half, for example, one third, when I compare it to half, is less. One third, I would write right about here. You can see our fraction model here, and it ends roughly here. Doesn't have to be exact, but you want to get as close as you can within reason. The second is greater than one half when we compare fractions to half it could be greater for example seven twelfths you can see our model here one two three four five six seven and that would come up and roughly seven twelfths would be placed on the number line right here and finally when you compare fractions it could be equal to one half for example two fourths here you can see in yellow, we have one, two fourths, and that's coming up right here. That would be equivalent to one half. Let's practice. If you want to pause, you can. Write the fractions in order from least to greatest on the number line. Again, remember we're going to be using our uh, strategy of benchmark fractions. Three fourths is greater than two-fourths. In other words, two-fourths is our equivalent fraction, three-fourths, so it's going to be here. I'm just showing that here with our model, one, two, three-fourths would roughly be right here. Two-eighths is less than four-eighths. Remember that four-eighths is equivalent to half, so two-eighths is going to be here. And here I'm showing your eighths, one, two. Two eighths would go there. Two thirds. Now two thirds, if a little trick, if if you get stuck on something, you can use what I call the dot trick. See your bottom number of three? Just make three dots and circle two of them. And you can just have a visual that that is greater than half. So two thirds would be over here. And you can see here in our thirds that that would be roughly right there. And finally, three six would be one, two, three. And that would be equivalent with our one half. Let's try one more, this time without the models. If you want to pause. And go ahead, write the fractions in order from least to greatest on the number line. And pause if you want. Okay, four ninths. I'm not sure about that one. I think I'm going to come back to that. Nine twelfths. Well, I know that six twelfths is an equivalent fraction to one half. And nine twelfths, meaning that would be greater. So I'm going to place nine twelfths over here where I know that it is greater than half. Two fourths I know is a fraction that is equivalent to one half, so that was an easy one. One fourth, well that's easy because one fourth is less than two fourths, so I know that's going to be over here. And that leaves me with the four ninths. Well, if I use the dot method, if I'm not sure, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I circle four of them, I can see that I have less than half. I have five here and four here. Four ninths is going to go here, but I need to decide, does the four ninths go in between one fourth and two fourths, or does the four ninths go here? 
Again, I can use my cross multiplication strategy for ninths and compare that to one fourth. Nine times one is nine. Four times four is 16. 16 is greater than nine, which means that four ninths is greater than one fourth. In other words, that is going to be placed right there. So we have placed our fractions on the number line. All right, everybody, I hope that this has been helpful. Remember that today our lesson was on uh, placing fractions on a number line. We were ordering them. And our main strategy was to compare each fraction with one half. And we said that you really need to know your equivalent fractions and that your outcomes could be, it's either going to be less than one half over here or greater than one half on this side or equal, which would be directly above your half. For problems you're not sure about, you could use a cross multiplication strategy or a little trick here that I showed you with making your dots. All right, thanks everybody. Hope this was helpful.